to this session. Here is an, a talk about PGT Lab, bringing together hackers and activists for social change by Peter Yosso. Thank you. Do you, hear, you hear me well or? Yes. Good. Yeah, thanks for having me here. It's nice to be in Oslo. Um, I was gonna go to the FSCons a few years ago in Gothenburg and got sick, so this is my second try. Um, and I'm gonna talk about um, a DigiGem lab, which is um, sort of short for a laboratory for digital democracy, um, where, uh, where we work on trying to find new ways for democratic participations on basically all levels of society. We're looking at like citizen, cities, platforms for cities and how digital apps and tools can be used in smaller networks and organizations and everything in between. Um, so it's a relatively new project that started last year in Gothenburg. And um, the, um, the staff, which is us three, um, really come from very different backgrounds uh, where and different frustrations about things that we wanted to do. Uh, so I, I come from a web background. I used to run a web agency in Gothenburg um, for many years and uh, specializing in, in NGOs and nonprofits. Um, and I had this sort of frustration about like, all we did was presenting information. We didn't really use digital tools to mobilize or organize or create a, um, more of a democracy in organizations. And uh, then uh, Anna in the bottom, my uh, Anna Sanne, my co-founder, she, she had worked a lot in, in poor areas of Gothenburg uh, with democracy projects and had this frustration about like not being listened to, not being able to participate in, in processes about what, uh, how to run the city, how to affect your neighborhood. Um, and Sana, in the top left, she's a, she's a local politician and um, elected member of the Gothenburg City Council uh, since last election three years ago. So she's, yeah, and she's, pretty fed up with that <laughs> sitting in the local council and, and the, the kind of distance they, they have to the actual citizens. Um, so but what we have in common is that we all um, been involved in different social movements and we've been active in, in different campaigns and we're interested in democracy and how to solve uh, these problems of participation and engagement with new digital tools. And also from the inspiration of seeing what happens in a lot of other countries um, like Spain, uh, where there's a really interesting movement of coalitions of social movements running the cities of Barcelona and Madrid, for example, and experimenting with new tools that I will get into a bit and uh, other places like, like Iceland and Taiwan that's been experimenting with new tools on a sort of city level um, for a long time. So, um, so I'm gonna talk about what we're doing in the project, what we think is, is needed to advance democracy and, and participation and uh, um, a little bit of inspiration from other countries. Um, so, but but also, I mean the. Oh, some also, an, another background to what we're doing is not just from our professional frustrations, but also from the from the frustrations about the political development in uh, in Northern Europe, not to speak of the U.S. Uh, these are Swedish Democrats uh, celebrating after the last election, um, which is a far right um, party with roots in fascist movements. Uh, so, yeah, so we have, we have these currencies and these movements that really wants to 
decrease participation, they want to limit democracy, they want to exclude minorities. Um, and also at the same time, like very much coinciding with, with the erosion of the welfare state. Um, and uh, where Sweden used to be this international example of, of a welfare country, but where we since like 30 years has been losing that gradually and like have, um, uh, are now the country in the developed world which has the fastest growing income equality. Um, so that's pretty spectacular and it's, and it's sort of a not very positive future prospect. Um, so so our, our idea is basically that like to counter all this we need more involvement in social movements, we need more engagement, we need to um, be able to, to have more influence over our, our neighborhood, our city, our country. And this can really be done, as we've seen in some international examples, and much of it with just not very complicated digital tools to collect people's opinions and create discussions and so on. Um, so, yeah, how do we work with this? Um, we think that these, we've come to believe that these three things are crucial um, to to actually start building democratic participation from below. Um, it can't just be uh, can't just be created from the top from a decree of the state. Um, it needs to be built from social movements. Uh, that dialogue, which is a very popular word in Swedish sort of civil servant society, <laughs> that's not enough. We need more of a real participation. And the last one, that these tools for democratic participation, they really need to be open source, they need to be developed by a community and influenced by the citizens. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these ones and what we mean with them. Um, so when, when it comes to the first one, this is really mainly what we're doing. Whoops. Um, our main work is, is mentoring young people in different projects about participation. Um, and we have this, this uh, funding where we can fund people who, who live in Sweden and are under 26. So if that applies to any of you, we have some money that we're kind of free to spend <laughs> on different projects. Um, so these projects can be about like trying out the tool for participation like um, Lomeo, which is a meeting tool, or like testing next cloud in your organization. Oh, um, uh, researching tools, or just like playing around with new technology. Um, and also, we're uh, being a resource center for social movements and giving workshops and, and uh, teaching them about new technology. Um, and generally just giving workshops and talks about what's um, about these things. And also like since this year there is an interesting movement in, in Sweden for uh, municipalism. I, I don't know if you're aware of that term. Um, it's inspired by by these cities in Spain, cities in Spain, where they've been, um, um, where like social movements have formed political parties to run for uh, for the local city councils, and are now running the four biggest cities in Spain: um, Barcelona, Madrid, Valencia, Zaragoza. Uh, so these are representatives from from Barcelona who came to a conference Demokratisering och Rörelse, uh, Democratization and Movement in Gothenburg in May. And there have been a similar conference in Stockholm and there's going to be one in Jönköping in, in spring. Uh, so there's an interesting discussion about this, like how, 
um, basically how to do local politics in a different way that's not so dependent on the old party structures um, that could be done in a more horizontal way and in a more engaged way and also these these movements there are um, city movements which are sort of close to the Podemos party in Spain have been experimenting a lot with different platforms for participation, for discuss discussions online, for voting and all these kind of things. Um, so, so there's really lots of exp interesting experiences now coming out of Spain. And uh, so yeah, uh, and another thing we've been doing is just like documenting some of the apps and platforms for participation in this DemoCat site, which is really for um, non-tech people to get into how to use some of these tools in an easy way. Um, so, and like the last thing that we're now that we're planning for for next year is to have local hackathons to um, to work on these things and to to explore these platforms and see how we can improve and adapt them to local conditions. Also, because we really find that there's like um, well we work in in participation, but there are different non-profit organizations in, in the Gothenburg area which work with like sustainability, ride sharing, like uh, sharing free stuff or whatever. And uh, so we kind of want to build, build a, t a community around all these things where, uh, where which are like non-profit projects for the common good um, and have basically much the same needs of, of building a lasting community of developers and, and designers and others uh, who are interested in contributing. So, um, so this is something we're really looking forward to now. Um, and just let me know if you have any questions or, yeah. So the other, the other thing like I was talking about, about dialogue, um, it's uh, yeah. This is it, it's kind of been surprising us that there, there's been a um, a push for sits and dialogues in Sweden for for 15 years, and and um, Swedish municipalities are actually and they're doing a quite good job. But there's there's something that we're really uncomfortable about. <laughs> it's their view of participation, which is this model that they often use of um, the participation ladder, um, where you have like different steps. You can go up the ladder with more and more participation from just getting information to consulting, to dialogue, to influence and to co-decide. And and kind of feel like this is more of a non-participation ladder as this, this is the only step where we actually take part in decisions. Um, and you seldom get there. You get to this dialogue, which is really unclear what it means. You might send in a citizen proposal, and you don't know really what happens with it. Uh, you, you don't know what's the next step in that process. Um, so we, we try to work, or our concept of participation is um, what we call the participation spiral, which is based on work by the Decent, which was a EU project for uh, digital participation. Um, and also, also the work that Nesta in the UK has done. We've got a report from them, which you can download online, which is really good if you want to have the more, uh, yeah, read more about this stuff. But basically, this model sees every every decision making process as a process with a start and an end which start where it starts with just generally raising an, raising awareness about the question 
creating discussions, then coming to making the decision and moving on to actually implement it and then evaluating it. And, and for a sort of public processes like cities and so on, I mean, this can be used on, on any group taking a decision basically, but like, especially when you do it as a citizen in a city or in a country, it's really, it's kind of important to know where you con contribute in the process. Um, it, and uh, um, sometimes it's all right to not be a part of the decision making if you know that from the start and if your role is to really con create discussion and contribute with ideas. Like Taiwan is doing lots of work now with digital participation where they they focus a lot on just like bringing in lots of ideas from citizens and uh, and having those ideas as a basis for new legislation. Um, they're using a, a tool that's called Polis that we write about in this Democrat guide, which is really cool for just like gathering gathering opinions from basically millions of people and seeing the what are the main points that people are making, what are the main opinion groups. Um, so yeah, this, this is a bit abstract, but I think that there is often a, a sort of fundamental misunderstanding from, from uh, uh, citizen officials about participation. So, but stuff, things that we think are really interesting is like when you have processes of in cities with actual participation, actual decision making. Um, this is, this is a screenshot from the citizen platform that Madrid are using um, to make a participatory budget, which means that you can, uh, you can post a proposal to the site and then in the next round you vote for proposals and the proposals with the most votes get money from this like pot, this, uh, this fund. Uh, that's been set aside for, for the budget. So they're, they're like handing out 100 million euros this year to proposals that are like entirely um, contributed by, by the citizens of the city. And this is from the first round that they did in February. They're doing a few rounds this year. And it's really like I was struck by how 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 constructive <laughs> these things are <laughs> it's like because you often get this oh if the citizen decides uh, entirely on their own it's going to be chaos and so on and these suggestions are like the winning ones are like more i don't know if anyone speaks spanish uh, i hardly do but <laughs> the first one is about more trash cans more bins in the city uh, the second one is is sheltered houses for f for women um, who've been abused the third is uh, reforestation, more forests. And then there's like solar panels and yeah, it's pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Does the UK also have something like that, like a voting thing to have uh, topics taken up in their parliament? Yeah. It's kind of similar to this. Yeah, yeah, a lot of places have, have like citizen proposal systems, but um, Many of them are works the way that if you get a certain number of votes, it would be uh, they they would have a discussion about it in the local council or the so or the parliament. Delegates money directly. Yeah, and this is the actual uh, decision making. Like so, that's the that's a big uh, that's a big difference. I mean, those other systems are good, but. The thing that happens is it gets to the local council or parliament, and they can say yes or no to it. So, so it's more of a suggestion thing. Um, wow, it's so warm in here. <laughs> I don't know if we can we keep the door open, maybe. Uh, <laughs> didn't expect Oslo to be this warm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we walked in and it hit me. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, so yeah, this is that's what you can do, and this this is uh, also an, an open source platform. But I'll get into it a little bit more. 
Um, so, so the last point is like, is this um, kind of visionary one about that these tools for participation need to be developed and controlled by citizens. And it kind of, um, yeah, it sounds sort of utopian, but there are lots of different arguments for it. And it actually works that way in quite a few places. So the first reason to, mm, I'm talking mainly about this kind of city citizen platform now. Um, when you have a system for voting in a city, it's it's really important that it's open source because you don't want you don't want private interests to be able to manipulate the resource the results. Even though that might be unlikely, it's it's kind of weird to put that power in in private hands in the hands of a private company, the way it's done in Gothenburg, for example. Um, also. Also, you have the advantages, of course, of the open source software to be well tested and well thought out uh, by a community of users. And like, by actually involving citizens in looking at the platform and adapting it and, and contributing to it, you, you will much better reflect the needs of the local community. Um, then there is the thing about, I mean, some of these systems are kind of huge and complex um, and uh, when you have um, w when you do it op open source you can you can have a city like Madrid spending lots of time developing a platform that can then be used by smaller cities or even like NGOs or organizations or whatever for voting um, so so you can get that international collaboration because uh, basically like um, the challenges to make this kind of platforms are pretty much the same in, in different countries. They're, they're studying a few different examples in this report about like what, what are the main challenges. Um, it's, it's pretty much like getting people to actually using it, um, making it like Making it, <coughs> making the user interface simple, making people um, realize that like what the process are and feeling it as they are a part of it. Um, so there's a lot to be gained from just like collaborating internationally, and and um, <coughs> some examples of this is uh, is th these were kind of one of the pioneer platforms. I think it's kind of ugly, but uh, <laughs> it has worked for Iceland for a long time. It's their, their platform for Reykjavik, Better Reykjavik, um, by the Citizen Foundation, which made this open source um, platform, web platform, where you, can, um, where you can suggest improvements of the city and vote on them. And it's also tied to like budgeting. So they've been distributing uh, 18 million euros uh, since it started, which is a lot for Iceland. And it's been and it's, it was exported quite early to Estonia as well. So they've also used the same one because it's open source. Um, so yeah, they were the pioneers. And then uh, the this is the this is platform from Barcelona. Um, which is also open source and very kind of connected to the local developer community. They had a big conference last weekend and conference and hackathon for this. And uh, and there was a representative from Helsinki who announced that they will start using this next year. So that's also an in interesting example of this like international collaboration. Um, And and then um, we have the the um, the one that Madrid is using. That the screenshot from before was from. Um, it's called Consul, and uh, this uh, and uh, tomorrow night I'm going to go to Madrid and <laughs> be there for two weeks at the hackathon working on this 
platform. Um, and it's very much connected to, the, there's a, like a digital cultural house in Madrid called Media Lamprado, uh, which is a super interesting place that I think you should check out if, you, if you're in Madrid. Um, they do lots of, they have lots of like hacker groups or maker spaces and whatever. And they also do these two weeks hackathons where you work on uh, projects for the community or for, uh, yeah, like socially, um, about sustainability, about collective intelligence, uh, about participation. So they've been very much like instrumental in making the, pl the actual platform console well used and well tested and and uh, adapted to the local needs. Um, so, so that's a, so I think that's a really fascinating model of having a sort of hacker space contributing to the way that actually the cities run. Like, um, and um, yeah, they're also gonna have like. They're having a long event now where they have this two weeks hackathon, which have different projects. It's not just a console project, but a few different ones too. And then there's a console con in a couple of weeks. Um, so if you're into Ruby on Rails or like citizen participation, I recommend going there. Um, um, it's yeah. It's also a, a, our the thing we will do in the lab is basically about making this console platform a bit more accessible. It's kind of really nice when you have it installed and everything is set up, but it's hard to try out if you're not a citizen of Madrid. Uh, <laughs> it's not just Madrid; it's being used in about 30 Spanish cities. Um, <laughs> But they don't have a demo version. They have very little documentation, um, so it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to get started with or see see what you can do with it. So what we're gonna work on is like basically um, write documentation, set up a demo version, make some present it a bit more accessible, because um, I think it can be used for. Um, not just cities, but basically other kind of budgets or proposal processes. Like it's um, um, the momentum movement in the UK, which is the sort of support movement for Jeremy Corbyn. They used it for their annual meeting uh, a few months ago and only used the sort of proposal part of it. Um, and it was also used in Paris for a participatory budget for the social housing um, association for for the city um, so yeah so it's it can be used for a lot of different things um, and it can be translated to more languages and so on so um, um, just to wrap up a bit like um, all of these things kind of they kind of need us as with our different skills to contribute quite a lot <laughs> to these processes. And uh, I mean, not all cities have that kind of advantage to have a, a city council that's really supportive and, and interested in experiencing with new things. But building these things from below is something that we all can contrib contribute with. And uh, it's also very interdisciplinary work where we need to have like, we need the programmers for setup and security and development and all these things. We also need designers for, for user interfaces to be really accessible to, to wide, to, I mean, the whole population basically. And, and we need sort of social uh, researchers to, to see how we can work with participation, how can we combine these digital to uh, tools with other methods of, of engaging people. Um, like the most successful examples of this kind of participation is when, they, when there's a clear plan for using both a digital tool and physical 
methods of face-to-face -face, um, engaging with people in the city. So, so it's 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 an um, interdisciplinary and really fascinating field. And uh, and uh, yeah, we need you. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> and if you're if you're under 26 and living in Sweden, we have a little bit of money for you too. Uh, otherwise, you're welcome anyway to contribute in any way. So, um, so that's basically it. And I'm really happy to discuss any questions. If you have. Thank you. Um, there are existing systems, but I can't imagine setting them up and making them be taken and used as easy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hard one. I mean, there's a lot of paperwork and, and um, bureaucracy. Yeah. Like many of the places that have the most advanced systems now are places where they had like quite dramatic political crisis or economic crisis. Um, <coughs> uh, like in Iceland, it came out of the crash, the, the banks crashing down, and, and it was a like completely new part. This uh, party started called the, the Best Party, uh, that was headed by a comedian <laughs> who used to go to like press conferences dressed in drag. Uh, so he's so it kind of this eccentric person, and he brought in the Better Reykjavik platform. And, uh, like same in Taiwan, where they experiment a lot, came came out of the student movement called uh, the Sunflower Revolution, like in 2012. And uh, yeah, Spain obviously from it's been coming from the protests in 2011 after the economic crisis. So, so yeah, it's it's uh, and it's something that we discuss a lot. Like, how do you how do you make this happen without uh, uh, this kind of economic crisis. Um, it's interesting, though, in, in Finland and Helsinki, whether they are pretty advanced and gonna do, they're going to do a, a participatory budget next year, where you can vote if you're 13 and up. Um, so that's kind of cool. The thing is that projects like these require quality assurance, uh, lots of certifications, and other things, too. Yeah. but. As I mean, as we see, it it kind of works in places like and in big cities too. So, yeah. Uh, how do you fund uh, projects like these? Um, our project is funded by by this uh, Swedish inheritance fund, or I used to call it like the lonely millionaires fund. <laughs> it's where. It's where uh, uh, Money from people who don't have any inherit anyone to inherit their money goes into this fund where you can apply to work with uh, projects with young people. So that's where we get funding for three years. So we're totally independent, really. But uh, like more generally, um, like projects that want to uh, have uh, di more digital democracy mm. um, in general, uh, wouldn't it be? to organize some sort of collective funding for development of these projects? Yeah, that would be really good. And also, I mean, one challenge is for us is that we want people to, to control their own data and not use go Google services and so on. Use Nextcloud, for example, instead. But then you need, you need ho hosting and you need expertise uh, in in hosting and so on, so it would be, yeah, some kind of pooling resources would be really good for networks and organizations. Yeah. How many people are engaged in those operations? Are you thinking about the Spanish platforms or? Um, yeah, I mean, like for developing them or well, 
Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, like for Madrid, I don't know how many people they are employing to work on it. There, like, there is a small team working on it, like as developers, um, and then, and uh, then there is community around that, and there's like, uh, there's um, there's a Slack group with people like developers from different cities that are using the same platform. Um, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, um, it's, it's not a lot of people who are employed for it really, but uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't have any numbers really. Um, what for communication? For communication? Yeah. What, sorry? Yeah, we. I mean, Slack isn't open source, but that's what we use at the moment. Uh, <laughs> we we tried out uh, Sandstorm for a while, which is a really interesting way to <laughs> install open source apps, um, where you can uh, once it once it is installed on a server, you can just like click install. Uh, um, chat tools and Kanban boards and, and document sharing and so on. Uh, so that was a really nice idea, but it didn't, our like non, more non-technical users didn't really get it. <laughs> and you couldn't get notifications uh, for new messages and so on. So it kind of fell on that. But there is like, I mean, there's as alternative to Slack, there's, there's Mattermost, there is Rocket Chat, there is uh, Riot, maybe you know other ones. So I think it's a matter. Yeah, so I think it's a matter of time before we have a good, uh, like uh, a good enough replacement for Slack that is open source. IRC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, our problem is yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know it's great for developers. And I, I mean, when I used to, when I worked at the agency, it was a different story of just like, you can use any tool, people are gonna get it. Like, but when we work with activist networks, where there are lots of people, there might be lots of people coming and going, like being there for a while, doing it on their free time, uh, not being very technical. Uh, and it just has to be like super easy for them to get started. So, so that's a that's a challenge. And it's it's always this. Yeah, I mean, it's you always get to choose a little bit between. Uh, we're trying to push for the open source solutions and for the like secure solutions as much as possible. But there's no point if people don't use it. So. <laughs> um. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.